Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to Charnel, which has been actually quite changed. Although from the um, from the outside aesthetic, it's not quite too obvious what the changes are. The changes have been quite massive in regards to how the channel now functions. You see in front of you multiple side-facing dumb missiles, which are all set to only fire under very specific circumstances, as you see about those two lovely green arrows. They will only fire when they are, well, directly facing an opponent, basically making them a useful side weapon. Using the new warhead, which is the, let's go on it quickly, the thumper head, which basically makes them into over-glorified, well, cannon shots, honestly. The thumper head, when it collides with a construct, will imp will impart kinetic collision style damage relative to the missile's mass and forward speed. So that's fantastic. So they're dumb, but they actually they actually do a remarkable amount of damage. So what are these changes I hear you, hear you cry other than the obvious side weapons? Well, the front weapons will now only fire when they're facing forward. Hurrah! And, most importantly, the ship no longer tips when moving forward. Well, it does tip to an extent, but honestly, that's a very, very reasonable extent, considering how much it used to tip. Observe! So, full speed ahead, this is on full turn, and it will in a second cap out. There we go. That's pretty much as much as it will tilt now, which is fantastic. This has been achieved via the use of some low-down, uh, what they, what do you call them? Thrusters, uh, rudders... Uh, rotors, there we go, and a much heavier keel in the centre of mass, which is actually currently there, making it a lot more stable. The ship is actually doing remarkably well. Today, though, we are going to test its limits and add something a little bit interesting. We are going to be testing out front-facing harpoon guns, making its ram a little bit more efficient. On top of that, we're going to desperately try to make it a little bit better in terms of its... Um, in terms of its armour, okay, another thing I've done off camera, because um, over the last few days... Oh, one second, actually, let, oh, be right back for one second, there's a phone currently ringing. Okay, we are back, I do apologise for that, uh, sometimes life just occurs. Anyway, you see in front of you the other thing I've been doing off camera. Now, you may be thinking I've done a bit too much off camera, and I actually agree here, but the reason is, and I've got a pretty darn good reason, that many of you already know, but um, some of you may not know if you don't follow me on social medias or just haven't caught some of my other videos, uh, for the last four days I've actually been out of the country. I've, I've went back to jolly old England to visit my mother for her birthday. Ah, oh, aren't I a good son? But anyway, um, during that time I had no access really to um, record, but I did have access to the internet and a rather good gaming laptop, and I tried to resist playing too much from the depths, but occasionally things happen, and well, you see in front of you my first ever structure, which, I, which I'm yet to name. The whole thing is meant to look um, kind of skeletal with a sort of um, insecty vibe and I actually really really like it because who doesn't like insects? Um, the one thing I do need to change is the missile system which doesn't function correctly at the moment. Well it does function correctly but they get in each other's way because they all fire at once. Actually, while I explain, let's fix that. So the whole point of this little um, vehicle, this little, this little, little, this tiny little it insignificant building is that it is here to defend this channel um, from both sides in fact and it does a pretty darn good job with a rapid fire quad gun as its main gun and huge missiles currently in place here it does the job exceedingly well uh, with extremely large missiles because who doesn't love exceedingly large missiles there we go that's what's after let's face it this way instead okay so what I want to do is actually attach all of these to the same AI. Now, originally, I wanted them all on different AIs, sorry, different uh, missile controllers, so that if one gets knocked out, the others can fire. But what I noticed is um, making them sync so they didn't fire together was actually incredibly difficult. So much so, they were getting in each other's way every time I fired, and it was just becoming an absolute nuisance. Now, can I attach these on top? I can. Cool. I was on to down on top. Um, however, where do I actually want this? Um... I guess we'll put one here. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, not uh we've got to connect it to those, don't I? Okay, let's turn off mirror mode for a second. Put one there, and then we'll put the identify friend or foe here, and then let's stagger them to the max. Fantastic. But as you can tell, heavily still a work in progress, so I will be of course recording the construction of this lovely defense. I actually adore it. It's 
I don't know, it looks nice to me. It looks like it's going to end up well. It's got a very simple laser defense, it has no shields currently, and as you can tell, the missile system is still very much a work in progress. So the final thing we need to do is add the actual local weapons controller, which we can pop here. Controlling one, fantastic, then I want this. Okay, so the missiles do actually need a bit of work as well. So again, lots of things to be worked on. They are three fragment warheads, which have which are exceedingly less accurate as it goes along. They um, they fire well, they do a lot of damage, and they are actually remarkably fast. That's kind of what I've tried to do. I wanted fast-moving large missiles, of course. That's one of the least efficient things you could do, but I found it exceedingly fun, and these actually do work pretty darn well. They do a lot of damage, it's just a matter of they could be really, really improved. Okay, that's better. Also, if they all hit at the same time, I noticed they cause all sorts of issues as they manage to knock out each other's fragments and just, oh, all sorts of silliness can occur. Okay, oh, and let's just demonstrate this. Isn't it beautiful? I absolutely love that turret, although we do need a lot more ammo, so actually what I need to do as well, before I forget, is quickly put down some... Where are you? Now, for Thor's in resources, let's put down some ammunition processors. Okay. Uh, not just yet. I will in just a second. I'm just going to put these next to the engine for reasons I don't quite know. Good enough. Okay. So, obviously, we don't really want to fight it with our little satellite. We'd much rather fight... a uh, little balloon thing. We'd much rather fight it with this. There we go. Structure versus... what am I actually fighting? It would be nice to actually know what I'm fighting here. An urchin, a flying squirrel, oh god, one of those things, and another urchin. The flying squirrel are such nuisances. Okay, so we're here. And fire away! Hopefully that will go against the urchin, not the flying squirrel, because, it oh good, the flying squirrel isn't up straight away. Now let's see how much damage these actually do, so I have been testing them out. Yep, yep, that's, that's beautiful. That is, yep, that's exactly what I wanted to see for such huge missiles. Beautiful indeed. And then there's the rapid fire. Um, the actual shots are remarkably weak and purposely a little bit inaccurate, purely because I love this. Just this hail of shots. I'm going to improve them with more explosive rounds when I can. Okay, that's what I don't want to see. In fact, if we can hit that once... There we go. We should take out the engines, is what I was going to say, and it seems like we have. Of course, it will be repairing quickly, so hopefully another missile or something um, focuses on it. But right now, it seems like it's not. Oh, there we go. No, it's just firing at the other thing and happens to be in the way. Please hit the... please, and yes, there we go. <laughs> I love that hail. Oh, the hail of shots went past it for a second there. What a beautiful sight. What a beautiful sight indeed. Uh, I, I'm actually falling in love with structures. I love the idea of it. It's this stationary thing you can build and you don't have to consider movement or anything. It's all about how the guns interact and how the structure itself looks at the end. And so far, particularly from this angle, I really, really like it. And I also really, really like these missiles, and I'm going to be using them a lot more in the future. Or at least that kind of style with multiple fragments, because that's just glorious! Because it's not it's not really a lot of point damage, because I've, I could make them a lot more accurate with their fragments, but instead I've opted for more of a spread damage, it just causes such collateral... Look! Just look! Oh, it's glorious! I do love it! I do love it! Uh, I have missed playing this game on my gaming computer, it must be said, because it looks so much better when you have the settings up. <laughs> it's one of those games. Yeah, this this turret needs to be worked on. I do adore that, though. Just... I just adore it. Quad guns with with the um, AI only controlling the turret itself, rather than each, each um, segment. I do love the whole shotgun element. Ah, so... As you can probably tell, I'm really back into this game again, so, pull all. At the moment I'm sending Channel on a bit of a journey, I wish to kill some more things and, like I say, upgrade it once I've got enough resources to do so, because I do need to make another one of our little Nurgle huts to actually get resources, as currently we're not actually gathering resources. Oh, and I managed to capture Drake at some stage, so yay for that. Um, I might consider quickly att Oh yes, we've also got this. I should say about that, shouldn't I? So I'm tempted to scrap actually because of its um, value, but here we go. We have the more. Eh? We uh, we I have stole this from the Deepwater Guard. It's one of their more premium flyers, and I managed to um, take it out because well, actually I wasn't meaning to capture it, but I rammed it and apparently captured it in the process because I downed it with all sorts of missiles and gubbins. Yep. Rather beautiful, isn't it? I actually don't think it does too well sometimes. It must be said, it's definitely a good vehicle. 
Just, um, I find that it's a bit lacking in most fights. I think adding some missiles or making it a missile carrier would make it significantly better, but since it's made out of pure wood and it kind of struggles to stay in the air for extended periods of time, I will most likely be scrapping it eventually, but for now, it's kind of awesome. We could be really, really cheesy, just for a second, just so I've got resources coming in. And let's go resource gatherer, because I don't really care about the oil too much. Let's put one there. Don't know if they'll work if they're on top of each other. They probably won't, but oh well. If that's the case, that's the case. Can I put them on here? Okay, so we pull. Pull all. There we go. And then our glorious little Morai there. Can you please go over there for a second? Let's see if you'll start gathering resource. You will. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, poor Morai. Okay, let's continue the uh, exploration. Some defenders dare to battle us. I wonder what's actually in the enemy squadron there. We have an urchin and a flying squirrel. Really, a flying squirrel in that group? That's really weird. I think that's because I've changed the difficulty and such. Um, we're seeing some really weird combinations, like the flying squirrel is actually considered a higher-end vehicle because of its annoyance level. So I normally don't see them in battles such as this, but I'm seeing them all the time now. It's like a really common sight for me. Hmm, we do fire a lot of missiles, so it might actually hit... Oh, God. I think our two lasers at the back is... Yeah, there we go, is what's going to do... Oh, God, that was, that was actually the anti-missile laser that did that. Yeah, because it shoots so many missiles. Yep, um, now it's our normal lasers, but the anti-missile laser just cut that up. It's surprising how much damage these occasionally accidentally do. It's really quite surprising. Well, there we go, that's a very easy victory there. And, because apparently this is a strength 20, now that's quite a low strength vehicle, so a lot of that comes from that. Uh, shall I move up against, uh, against the side of them, see if we can fire our side missiles? Okay, they're going to miss because we're going to be at a bad angle, but... Fire them, maybe? No, too far, oh no, there they go, they're fire, oh, I've got... Yeah, I need to fix that. That's because they are clipping on the piece of metal next to them as they go out, so they only work when they're level. Really silly, actually. Um, I was going to fix that, but completely forgot. I'll do that off-camera. It's quite a boring process. All I'm going to have to do is move one piece of metal from each of these struts, and then they'll work absolutely fine. I know this because I had tested it, and then forgot to save the game. Anyway, so like I was saying earlier, let's uh, turn off the AI for a second, I would very much like to test this vehicle with harpoon missiles, uh, um, being able to drag ourselves into the enemy and then say hello to them. And I'm tempted to change these into harpoon missiles, but I won't, because that would be a real huge waste of our aggressive power. So most likely I'll have them on the side or here, so... Missile controller, there we are. So where would I want them and how many would I want? I think only two. We'll only have two. And we'll have it set so they only fire when they are remarkably close to the enemy. So we know we're trying to shoot them. And actually what we could do is make it so these missiles actually have a minimum range. Which will be equivalent to the max... Yeah, so the minimum range of this... So I can't think what I'm trying to say here. Yes, the minimum range they'll fire, so any under that, I can't word right now they won't fire will be equal to when these actually do fire, so that way we'll get less um, in trouble with both of them. So, can we just have this straight here? We can, fantastic. Uh, so we can sort it all out from there, which is lovely. Then we want missile blocks. Don't we need them to be too big? We want them to be fast, more than anything. So, f um, couple of short range thrusters. Then we want two fins, that's fine. Uh, we w it's not going to go too far, so having only one fuel tank is absolutely fine. We want the one turn segment, then we're going to want the harpoon with some cable. Okay. Yeah, it's basically the gist of it. So, AI, local weapon controller. Now, we want this to be quite close, I'd imagine. So, how close to... Okay, this is really bad, though, because this is really, really just asking to be knocked off. So, why don't we put the... At least put the weapon controller under this. So we can we can always um, kind of put the system underneath later. But right now I just kind of want to add it. There we are. Okay. So minimum range. Any below this range will be ignored. That's what I wanted to say. So that I don't care about. But the maximum range I'm going to have as 140. Okay. So that should have all been added, except for of course we're going to have to do the settings ourselves. 
So maximum range to engage, 140, there we are. Which means now you, not you, but you, I want a minimum range of 140. Let's put a little bit of difference there. Okay, because, because, because obviously the missiles all don't fire at once, they will be going for some time. So now these two will only fire when that condition is met. Now, where do I actually put the cable for added, well, you know, cable? Um, I need to start messing around with these as well. Missile winch. Where do I actually attach this? Is it just to this? Is that attached? Okay, cool. So now these are harpoons, and that will help drag the enemy to, well, help drag us towards the enemy, hopefully, but if the other way occurs, and of course that's fine too. A very simple addition. We'll put them in a better place later, I believe, but right now I'm quite happy with that. Um, we only want them to be firing when the enemy is directly in front of us, which is part of this system. Enable. Because this is facing directly forward, it's quite a simple one. We just do this. Minus 18. Pff, pff, minus 15, plus 15. That'll be sound. There we go. Cut with clipboard. So it only fires in that little arc you can see in front of you with the green. Enable and paste. There we go. Let's save the channel and let's save the game and then let's hopefully get into another fight to test everything out. Well, this is curious. We have found a completely undefended resource zone. Now, I have found this resource zone in the past, except for the last time I found it, it had defense and it actually had zero of all of the resources. So that's a weird one. That is very weird indeed. We're fighting a moray. That's going to be interesting because the harpoons sadly won't work, but it's going to be an interesting fight nonetheless because this is the ship I've stolen before. <laughs> so I don't. I think Charnel just wins this honestly from the past fight, but let's see what happens now. And of course, let's actually turn on our. I, I really need to start doing that before getting into combat. Let's race ahead and let's see if we can get close enough to fire the missiles. Oops, fire, fire the missile. Oh, look, it had, it had an, a friend. I didn't even notice. It must have been hidden. Well, we're getting some very good shots with the cannon. And there go our missiles, happily destroying it. Hopefully we'll be able to take out most of its basic systems. And the enemy there... Ooh, those missiles are not being knocked out. Oh, uh, no, 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 they all were. They all were knocked out last minute, thankfully. Oh, I just realised I didn't add a maximum height for these things. These are probably going to try and fire against the Moray if we get too close. So let's try and avoid that. Turn off a bit. Ah, we're in a really bad position with this. That I don't know why I, I just charged forward there. That's actually quite silly. I sort of slowed down. But let's see if we can um, go ahead and destroy their friend at least. With the turret defending us. Okay, so do a full turn and slow down a bit. Oh wow, that bug's still occurring. Um, so basically, that's my oil drills, which apparently are still attached to the oil drill. It's odd, I know. My engine's a bit damaged, it seems. Okay, it's not too bad, though. There you go, all got repaired, happily. I just want to see if... Oh, it's going to destroy it. I want to see if the harpoons work. Come on, work. Okay, we should be in range about... Well, very, very soon. Slow down. Make sure it's a sharp turn. Oh, there goes the harpoon gun, and... Yeah, we've put that in a bad place. Look, the harpoon's getting knocked off course by the actual stuff. It's oh, that was a harpoon gun! It didn't collide properly. Ooh, I might be able to actually capture that. Nope, sadly not. Okay, never mind. Yeah, the harpoon guns are going to have to be able to fire at a longer range. Also, like the side guns, they're... Ooh, whoa, should have been paying more attention. Thankfully, we're not quite colliding just yet. Oh, the moray is down. We're going to be able to get across that. We're not taking any damage from dragging on the floor, according to... Nope, we are now, according to the side. But not too much. There we go, just rammed into it. Well, there goes a lot of my keel. We've lost our rudder, but that's fine since we don't actually use the rudder for most of our turning. It's all with the front propellers. Will that, will that harpoon fire? That's the question. There it goes, and. No, that's really badly placed. My fault, though. Completely my fault. That should be done differently. Also, the one turn would have helped. 
Ah, we have target precision instead. That's actually a lot. That's actually causing a lot of the issues. Well, we rammed into it at least. We've done the damage, so it happened regardless. Oh, we could probably capture that right now, Lathrix, if you were to be paying attention for five seconds for once, rather than faffing around with harpoons. Oh, oh, look, we actually attached. Yay, one of our harpoons did actually attach to the enemy. In fact, two of them did. Yeah, one's right there, winching it in. Did I grab it? I think it's being destroyed. Yeah, it's too late. That's a shame. So the harpoons did work in the end. I just needed to swap a lot of things. Yeah, they're in bad places right now. Um, Maybe harpoon torpedoes would be... Bit Oof. Well, we're tipping over right now because we've got a whole breach and everything went wrong. We rammed into them. But we survived and all we need to do is just pull all put it back in the resource zone so we're gathering some resource while we're doing this and put it back in repair. Another thing is we've got a lot of um, we've got a lot of metal now so we can start upgrading the hull of Charnel so it's actually metal. We're doing well. We're doing well even if Charnel still has a lot to d we still have a lot to do until Charnel is completely finished. So let's go back here, let's turn off its AI so it doesn't run me drive out of the section, which I know it will because I know what it's like. Still sinking. Oh, I've got, like a, I've got like tiny little hull breaches on every single segment. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, no wonder what happened then. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but the entire like left side got shredded. How about now? There we go. <laughs> Instantly floating back to the top. Lovely. And that's why we need to upgrade to metal. But there's the thing. I'm tempted to leave it as it is. I'm very happy with it as it is. And, well, other than these, I need to fix these. But again, I'll fix it off camera because that's a very tedious process. Except for the front harpoons, which I think will do a lot better as a um, torpedo. So I'm tempted to put them into the hull here so they shoot out. As where they are right now, kind of on the floor and everything, that's what's causing all the issues. Let's just fire one. Let me just see what happens when I actually fire one. Will it go straight ahead? They both have a one turn, which means I will be controlling them and their direction. So... Yeah, it goes inwards because of it, as you can see. Sadly, that does occur sometimes. When you put, like, um, these on things and stuff, they do so much better when they're like this. They're kind of more free. When they're kind of on something the whole way, that can just happen. Still very cool, though. Still very cool when it fires, just... Also, this one has an explosive warhead. Did I do this one at all? Did I even attempt to do this? Because I don't think I did. I'm sure a lot of you face palmed. Yes, be oh, I, I did this, didn't I? I thought it was on the same system. I mean, it does kind of go the way you want it to, and it is exceedingly quick. Which is the whole point, but... Okay, let me just test something out. Okay, so we're back, and I've been messing around with certain things, and, well, this spin block is now in, in, the, in an incorrect position, with um, shooting the missiles in different positions. So, obviously, when these fire, I want them to be almost directly in front of this, really. So what I've done is I've caused the ejection now to fire to the left. Now, th that was actually the problem before. However, that's because it was too low and was actually ramming into our own ship. Now it does this. Now, isn't that cool? So ideally, now what's going to happen is they'll both fire inwards. Now, that should do the same thing, but the opposite. It does. Excellent. Um, it'll fire inwards and then go straight ahead, meaning that it will hit this area. And it does actually have both the one turn and the infrared, so it will try to go for a target after the first turn. So that will now work. Yay for harpoons actually functioning. So, let's continue and perhaps find one more fight, shall we? Sadly, sometimes things just simply do not go to plan, and well, after looking at multiple tiles around where, Char where Charnel was currently positioned, there were no enemies to face against our new harpoony power. So um, we're going to have to call it here as it is 4am and I am desperate to get some sleep. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, most importantly, shows that from the depths, is a series you wish to see continued in the future. We're going to be doing a lot of work on this fortress soon, I feel, as well. I do absolutely adore it, and like I said earlier, it's a big work in progress. And we'd need to make a few new ships as well. We can't survive off a single tiny ship like Charnel forever. 
lots we are in lots is in store so and threats. Thank you again for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a lovely day. Please do take care. And until next time, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.